Cool. Sorry for that. So I work for a company called Avanadi. It's a joint venture between uh, Accel and Microsoft. And uh, my background is uh, I spent in financial service world from starting from programmer to product management, building products, delivering <coughs> products, sales, account management, uh, M&A advisory, those things, and predominantly in financial services. So last three years I've been working on uh, open banking in Europe, talking to many clients, including some of the Nordic clients, including Finnish banks as well. And Right, so that's my background, but uh, last one year I've been focusing across industries because open APIs is not just one particular industry, it is across industry where you really bring a value to the customer. And that is where we see a lot of synergies are happening more and more, though it's the API program. So what we realized uh, two years back is the platform economy as part of our uh, tech strategy, every year we publish a tech strategy, and uh, part of the tech strategy, one of the things we thought is, okay, a platform economy is critical for any organization to survive. And uh, that is survival is, is possible only when you have a strategy in place that how do you want to work with your partners. Okay, question comes, okay, I'm already working with my partners, I go to my retail store, I sell my insurance and those things. Yes, but that's a physical selling not a digital cell, right? And then you need to apply a technology, and the technology could be APIs or AI or cognitive, chatbots or anything, but again, that's related to how you're going to give the better experience. So platform economy is a critical for a survival, for anyone. So the why it is a survival, because um, so far organizations, whenever you see what they publish, uh, some of the growth metrics and uh, economic metrics predominantly on uh, Return of activity, turnover, how much I'm expanding my stores, how many countries I operate, these are the things. But uh, what is happening now because of the digitization and uses of mobile is more and more increasing, now organizations started looking at, in a business side, okay, what is my digital sales because I'm making a digital investments. Okay, what I'm selling it, what is my acquisitions through digital? So these metrics are going to become more and more. That is where the API strategy is becoming more and more and attractive for a business to say why I have to invest more on my digital technologies. But not only that, but also how do I lead that into my economic metrics, right? So these combination of three, because these economic metrics is possible only when you have in a real, real ecosystems and you have a plan in place, you know who is a customer, what services you want to give, how much you want to control. There are a few slides which I cover about it. So this is quite important. And uh, I just want to give another example here because nine, eight, nine months back in Sweden, I was talking to one of the biggest uh, clothes retailer. And uh, they have an API program in place. They have a six, seven different brands within the organization. And uh, they publish some APIs. So I was sitting with their entire technology team and I asked me, okay, what is your plan? Yeah, every brand, we have a platform, API management tool, everybody publishing their products and service, products and catalog. I said, okay, why? Now, because others can use it, okay? Who is going to manage it? What is the motivation behind it? What is your legal things in behind it? They have no clue because it's a technology-driven project. Because the digital team is asking, I want an API for your products to sell. That's it. And when we looked at the digital strategy, then what we understand is that these things are there. They said, I'm not going to open new store anymore. They're global stores. I'm not going to open one store. My goal is I want these metrics to be implemented through your digital strategy and through your API strategy. So that is the API strategy. So the entire these two things falls under API strategy, not by physical expansion, right? So this is becoming more and more relevant. How do you think? start thinking when you're writing an API programs, right? It's not just a technical alone. It's more about driving the cultural change within organization. Who can think any API that I build is going to give a customer experience value as well as the business outcomes, right? So just to give a nutshell, uh, API program, the way we look at uh, is in a three different boxes. And uh, the first one is lipstick on the pick, like good UX, UI, that's used to be happen. But now that's going to change because everything that you're going to create from your customer experience has to be connected experience and uh, with, with the frictionless experience, right? And that is how it is going to change because so far people have done digitization, not really digital transformation to provide a better customer experience. The bottom one is where people started uh, modernizing their technology 
because they have a legacy, they have some API tools, they have some ESB tools, everything they have. But they're modernizing their technology so that the time to market can be met. The real oriented business value comes when you monetize, like uh, when you disturb your market. So this is the value. So unless you really have your strategy in place in these three things, your business and economic value will not be achieved. You will still achieve it, but different ways of to achieve, but not the way that you want to really give that kind of a confidence to your customers. So that is our role of API plays, and which is very critical. Don't look at one part only that I have need to do the program. Look at the holistic program. So just to give, um, is APIs is not a new thing to be honest, right? These are there and people are doing the business and it's been there from last 20 years or so. Now suddenly it became wow because the banks have opened up. Because banks see that okay, they're gonna make money out of it, that's triggered more for transformation. But to be honest, if you look back, I just put some industries here. I mean, there are many industries like energy and, and the IoT stuff and everything. So, Oh, even technology companies, I didn't talk about Facebook or here, but if you look at Azure or AWS, nowadays they're coming with everything as a service. They are coming into those models, right? Travel is the same. So this is a mind shift. I mean, we know we are doing it, but when it comes to the real time, we're not implementing it. Now, banking anywhere, I mean, they are really scraping and struggling. Very few banks are able to go there. Insurance, plenty of examples now. Insurance is leading in this market, not in this country, but leading in this market in the way they're trying to unify the services. It's connected. It's a doctor, it's a home, it's a bank, it's a retailer. So one of the biggest connected uh, thing is happening in the insurance market and the loans market. So these are the some, some thought, I'll, I'll, I'll put some kind of, I think it's not new, it's happening cross industry, it's all thing. And this is one of the best example, um, it's a US again, and, but again US is lagging the way they want to implement. So Walgreen, okay, Walgreen is a, it's like a drugs and, I mean, and a pharmaceutical company, but they want to invest into, into the Photoshop, so they are only thing, and what they've done is, okay, they started exposing their uh, photos through APIs. So what has resulted is, okay, the, the growth of the business is, is phenomenal for them, and sales has increased, this is a real fact, it's, it's a public case study, it's a real fact. And at the same time, the loyalty program, they're able to get new customers in. Because they're exposing their services through APIs for, because I'm a frame maker and uh, I need someone, right? I mean, if I go to the customer, I'm a frame maker, but I need a printing facility. So I use these guys' APIs to get printed, get the printing done. I make it frame, I'll sell. So I'm not investing on my printing. I'm just kind of adding more value-added services around a picture and selling it. So they make money. So this is kind of a mod. Now what these guys have done is, okay, they're on a fitness side, they're on a different things, the same customer, they started connecting. Okay, you have a health, you are buying my fitness thing, you are buying, so they're connecting customer experience around health and uh, thing, and they're becoming a customer profile for them. That means they control the customer. So they know the customer, what they want to do. So then they started pushing the promotion, the sales, partner sales, and those things. So this is what the ecosystem happens when you have a connected experience, right? So, so the why all these things are happening because um, this is, if, if you look at um, the fundamentally, if, if two steps back is because fundamentally the selling process is getting disturbed in the market today, right? The selling used to, used to be a different way, but today the selling is disturbed because, because of the desideration we as consumers, our behaviors are changing. And that behavior is changing because the salesperson has to think, okay, how I'm going to keep him to me so that he can buy something from me, right? Because it's becoming a, a, like B2B buying decisions. When I say B2B, when you buy a car, most of the clients to see, can I buy the same insurance from the same car in the same, same time, rather than going to the different bank and doing my research. I'm just giving an example. And uh, if you're buying an airline ticket, buying an insurance, you try to buy from the same airlines. That means they are influencing indirectly sell the different brand, though you don't know who is that brand behind that insurance company. You really don't know, but you buy an insurance from there, right? So this is evolving more and more. That is why one of the reasons, okay, the connected experience and ecosystem is becoming very, very critical here. And similarly, like an engagement, right? And the social and digital engagement is more and more increasing, and the influence from social media is also growing more. So this is also adding more and value to the way you sell it based on what customer did it. And uh, 
relationships, like customers, right? I mean, if you look at some of the startups, startup uh, uh, fintechs and small banks, and uh, some kind of a generation would like to do with them, not with the big banks. Because their mindsets are changing because they want some trendy, the brand quality, the, the image is changing. The psychological impact is, is changing. So, so these things are also need to consider, right? The, the sell, sales strategy and, and uh, expectations are also changing. Like there are, okay, I've done this. What is advice I'm getting if I'm dealing with them? I don't want to be a cold person, something coming, okay, I'm sold this, I go then, but what advantages I'm going to get out of from them? So some manufacturing companies have really done that in a good way, like and the proactiveness. Because when you buy a car, um, you get in a commitment, okay, this tire, okay, tire or, um, yeah, tire or equipment, right? Uh, it's going to run for so many miles, for example. If it doesn't, who is liable for that? Today, we don't get liability on that. But if the car manufacturing company thinks, okay, I'm going to pay back for this, if not met, like for example, Michelin, tire makers, they are doing that. And you get a benefit out of it. Or to the truck drivers, now they're charging for miles or how much you're going to use the tire, you pay for me. So that kind of a business model they're coming up now. And it's not joking, it's not happening, it's a public information. Caterpillar, the drilling and manufacturing equipment, now they are saying, okay, if you use my machine, it's going to consume so much of gallons of uh, petrol. If it's consuming more than that, because they have an IoT collection, and they say, more than that, I'll pay you back. Because I committed something to sell you something, it's consuming more than that, I'll pay you back. So that kind of an outcome-focused based model is evolving more and more now. So the selling process is disturbed now in the today's market. So, so typically, like um, the ecosystem and platform economy is now uh, forcing industry to work together and um, business need to operate with uh, interconnected ecosystems and platforms. They cannot uh, uh, work alone anymore. And uh, then why they need to do this? Because they need to provide a frictionless business requirements to support a customer. So the frictionless big partners are becoming in a primer way to grow business and company to provide a better customer experience. That is the full stop. So this is what we need to keep in our mind when we start designing the user scenarios, whenever we are designing anything that we go to implement for a monetization. So some of the questions before, I thought I'll, I'll, I'll just draft some questions, right? I mean, if somebody start thinking about doing some kind of a fintechs or, or any organization, they really need to think, okay, how many ecosystems I'm, I'm, I'm working with today? And how many platforms I'm connected? Not working and also connected, right? And uh, can I articulate a proposition uh, in here why I'm valuable in this connected network? And what is the purpose of each, right? Mm -hmm. So, and also the, you have to think, um, how are you going to dis, I mean, disrupt your own industry by thinking differently? Because that is where you're going to get an attraction, your brand value is going to increase, where customers stick to your, uh, uh, your brand, right? I mean, these are the some questions is you, we really have to think when you start thinking about uh, monetizing or, uh, or, or of your APIs. So, I'll just uh, skip the same thing. So what exactly the revenue model is not something you need to think, okay, it's not, you need to have the proper data and service. Um, uh, that interesting quote uh, recently I was reading, 7-Eleven um, uh, retailer store, the CIO was talking about, uh, he runs company like an API, a API company, data company, and uh, platform company. He doesn't think his IT is an IT organization. He doesn't, he thinks mine is an API company, mine is a data company, mine is a platform company. That is how the mindset they are thinking it. So you need to have any data, you need to have a platform which, which comes next semester, then predominantly everything you need to have to provide a better customer access. So it, it is driving to the customer. Not a commercial, obviously there's a commercial intentions behind it, but it's a customer. Then only you have a revenue model. You build everything, you don't know whom to sell to which customer, this revenue model is a failure. Right? So I'll show you that in next uh, couple of slides how exactly we, you, you need to think and uh, build, build those things. So and again, some of the things, uh, the questions uh, is, okay, if I need to start this program, um, how do I get my organization ready to participate in ecosystem? This is the biggest question always people are asking the CIOs and CTOs and so many. Yeah, technically I'm doing it, but how do I convince my business? 
I come across this few. And uh, how do I consider my platform ecosystem? Then some banks have set up their community leads and who really works on the ecosystem and partnership, the community, community champions or community managers, they need to have as part of the business strategy, right? They're not product owners, they're the community owners. And um, what capability do I need to have? Do I have the right infrastructure, right technology in place? And if not, what is going to happen? How do I go my existing? So I just want to give one story here. It's a real, real story. One of the leading um, the digital bank in Singapore, and uh, it used to work with uh, one of the insurance company for the last 10 years, right? So this digital bank, uh, I, I have a great, personally I have a great, they're the top, top, top today in open API's world, top bank. So today, none of us can buy an insurance in our mobile app, in a banking mobile app, right today. We don't buy it, right? So this bank wants to provide a travel insurance within their banking app. So they float an RFP, not to technology selector, they float an RFP to insurance companies, okay? This is my vision. Um, can you guys come with how in six months can you enable your products and services through my digital channel uh, to sell your insurance products? The 10 years relationship they had, they come back, I can't do it. It will take one year, two years because my systems are not AP enabled. I'm still with ESP. But another company, they said, yeah, six months I will do it. So just because of the two insurance companies have a different technology strategies, so this 10 years relationship is gone. This bank has signed up with the, the new relationship with the new insurance company. Now they are selling it. So now I went and personally checked it. And uh, yeah, I can buy insurance. Everything is powered through APIs, through that uh, new insurance company, on travel insurance, mobile, internet. It doesn't matter which channel. And also the payment, smooth, smooth payments with the local payment uh, companies. I can do that, right? So it's not technology alone, right? It's like you might lose your partners if you don't scale up your technology infrastructure, if you don't scale up the same mind share, right, with, with the partner that you work with. So these are the things that are very critical when you're trying to identify your partners. This is a real example. I'm, I'm not bluffing around. This really happened, right? So what is important is, okay, people think, yeah, I'm... My, I'm going to get into my API architecture. I'm good in technology stack. I'm, yep, I can do it. That's not true. That's not going to help you much, right? I mean, it might help, but not really. So the critical things is, okay, you need to have a new organization structure in place, right? That organization structure that, uh, that has a business stakeholder, that has a technology stakeholder, that has a sales people, the products people. Because in any organization, a product team defines, in a business side, they define the products and service, what they want to take to the customer, right? And the, when the product is defined, the product sets are defined, then they look for a new sales channels. It's not only my old sales channels. If my partner ecosystem, how do I do my distributions better? Because the ecosystem is not only consumer sell, your distribution improves, model improves, because you can combine multiple products together. Then again, what is my new marketing and branding in there? And uh, I'll come to an example of Volvo now. And uh, you, can, you can test that also now today. It's, it's working now, Volvo. And uh, then question is how secure my data, right? Because he, now here data comes a very, very, very important thing because it's my customer data, my partner customer data, and how do I segregate it, how much I protect my customer because if you lose customer, your business is gone, right? How do I maintain my intimacy with the customer so that how much Regulations are in place that I need to put in place. So that's another thing. So that's all related. But final thing, risk management is another very critical risk. I'm not talking about security perspective risk alone. This is about my partner risk. Is my partner is not going to go bust after a few months or a few years? Or the product that I'm selling is a risk-free product, right? So this is another very important, right? And people sometimes miss out some of this. I might have missed out a few things here. But this is based on my experience I'm talking about here. Even the legal aspects follow risk, right? It's legally protected or not, right? Unless you really have all these things, you put in a plan that you want to get into this market, you will have a problem. So I'm not going to, I, I don't want to put this slide, but I just want to give exactly how people, if, if they want to be a success in organization, how exactly they need to do that, like, and uh, if you are, want to get into the uh, platform business or economic business, and basically, you really have to see your business is ready and uh, what other players are doing in your same industry. 
and uh, then you have to look at what technology investment, what is my TCO, TCM perspective, what are the environmental things you need to consider, and uh, if I'm a standalone in my group business, how group business is going to get benefit out of it, and what are my key value drivers, and uh, what are my offerings, what is my revenue sustainability perspective, and uh, value assessment and determining actual buyer values. This is going back to my metrics I put, the digital metrics, economic metrics, those are links to here, right? And then uh, which partner I need to select, right? What are the pricing offers? Again, there is a trender process. It's like a typical <coughs> procurement process. And if we need to have all these things in place. And then once you have in this place, then you do the discovery sessions and ecosystem platform strategy session, where to play, how to win, what is your CAPI strategy and roadmap, and your uh, MVP, and you deploy it. So the technology comes later stage. But you need to be ready with the technology in a parallel. But to get into that, there's a lot of business, less tech. And then once you have those things are done, this is again, you're, um, you're getting into more technology, right? And how do you build an API? Because API is a product, right? API is kind of a product or a service. It's not a technical term. That means everything that you do is a product, then you do your ideation session with your UX designer, your sales team, and uh, your community manager, your product set. It's a huge organization that you come and do the ideation session, then you build. Once you build, you approve, publish, then you promote it. Once you promote, you need to monetize it. In the future, there will be a thing called API decommission will come and play. Because if the people are not using API, you need to decommission that API. Whether it's an external or internal uses, that doesn't matter, right? So these things you need to put as part of your new delivery or build strategies. And then, then once you have an API, how do you market them, right? The marketing aspect also you need to look at, right? I mean, how, like, is a user-led ideation, idea comes from somewhere, then you need to find a way to market that APIs, do hackathons, innovation, your partners, developer networks, and a website, marketplaces, and those things you do it, then that goes to customer, then there's a revenue stream. Then, but again, you need to have this onboarding and legal checks and contractual framework, pricing and billing and everything are self-enabled. Some of the airlines, I'll tell you in the B2B side, like um, one of the European Transway Airlines, in a B2B onboarding and contractual, everything is digitized. They don't need to pick up a phone to say, okay, I'm a new travel agent, I need to buy your airlines, uh, your airlines tickets. You don't need to call them. Just go subscribe to API, you're up. Your commercial model is already set up, predefined, and uh, you start using it and you pay for it. So it's also becoming very digitization of interactions. So there are, I just tried to put, right, as in a consumer perspective like us, what other things could evolve? And there are multiple cases it comes. I just want to pick up this case because um, I have a, like a, there is a, if I have a personal finance app, for example, right, if I have a personal finance app and uh, as a bank, you know that I'm paying a, a monthly, uh, monthly EMI to a particular um, BMW or Volvo or anyone, right? And they know it. So they can create a profile of me. Okay, you are paying something. Okay, this is your profile. Um, so can you tell me when is your um, term is case? Two years or three years? So if I give my profile, what bank can do is whenever there is a new car comes in, they can proactively tell, okay, there's a new car coming and you are a special customer and we have relations with, say, for example, Olvo. Olvo is not doing that, but Olvo. And um, do you want a test drive? Or uh, do you want a pre-book? So they can push that, right? Not only pre-book, right? And they can say, okay, if you really want to buy it and now if you book it, it's like 10%, 20% thing and the test drive is there. So you can, you can sell it that way that, okay, I know there is something new come. My bank is giving me 10% because if you go and bargain in a car dealerships, you definitely get 10% discount. And uh, then, okay, there are on top of it, okay, my insurance is with the bank, so I can add my insurance is here. That means nowadays, if you have a multi products in a same company, same organization, you get better discounts in a motor sector. I mean, I, I'm experiencing that. If I have my life insurance with one insurance company, if I'm buying uh, insurance with the same company, through the same bank, I get multi product, multi discounts, and better price. So these are just things that are happening. Now, Volvo, what Volvo has done now is, um, I really want a website and show them, in, especially in a US market. They've started in a US market. You can, 
you can buy car and um, when you buy a car you pick up a model then uh, you can see what are the other assembling accessories you want you can combine it you create a basket car basket that means you entirely created everything then what they've done is they've integrated even the loan directly with Santander and Nodia that okay you can apply for a loan then integrated with an insurance company in the same page you get an insurance you finish a purchase online if you really like the car, if you're getting a better discount, you can purchase everything, get a loan, get a thing. You can go and check it. Volvocost.com for a US site. It is there now. It is live, up and running. And not only that, you want a test drive if you want to do it, predefined test drive, you can get the everything, you can do it. And now they're getting the retail segment. Now with the same thing, they started selling other like the bags and the travel kits and everything. Now they started selling to Volvo, Volvo accessories. So, like always, a car manufacturing, car business, now they're getting into this, these different markets. Because I'm a customer, I need this. This is what called a customer connected experience to provide a frictionless business. So, that is where you get an uh, platform of economy. So, I will stop. There's very few slides which I will not touch base, but uh, that's okay. I'm, I'm running out of time, but uh, any questions? No questions is no good. <laughs> yeah, please. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you.